Would you turn in your Bibles to Matthew 26? I just want to be faithful to follow the Lord tonight. I guess I already got down, so I'm going to preach from the floor. Praise the Lord. So I believe that the Lord sent us here and brought me here for an amazing week with you. Do you believe that? Here's what I sense deeply in my spirit is that I believe that by the end of this week, I believe that by this weekend, God is going to fill this place up and He is going to shake this tent with His presence and with His power. But I want to begin to orient you tonight that we are called to plow and we are called to pray for this evening. So I believe the Lord sent us here and sent me here to preach. But really I feel that the assignment is more to pray. Because prayer is extremely powerful. I want to go on record and tell you that prayer is more powerful than preaching. Because when we preach, we're talking to people. But when we pray, we're talking to God. And God is the one who is all-powerful. God is the one who formed all the seas and the stars and the galaxies. And God is the one whom you and I desperately need in this hour. We need a revival of the presence and the power of God. We don't just need more meetings for the sake of gathering together. We need the presence and the power of God. And I am encouraged because as I travel all over the United States and now the world, what I am beginning to see is that God is gathering up people that have no other agenda but seeing His face and seeking His presence. See, things are becoming really, really, really simple. Because the life that God has called us to in serving Him is meant to be simple. In fact, the Apostle Paul warned the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians 11 when he told them, I am afraid that lest the serpent deceive you by his craftiness, the way that he deceived Eve in the garden, that you would be led astray from the purity and simplicity of devotion to Jesus. So our walk with Jesus is meant to be marked by purity. Would you say purity? Purity. And simplicity. Would you say simplicity? So purity and simplicity. God wants to make things really, really simple. And I'm here to tell you tonight that prayer is very simple. It's the reason why we don't do it. It's the reason why we don't prioritize it. Let me encourage you with something. I want to begin to open your heart and your mind. As you think about simplicity, something that is simple is very plain. We might say that it's very easy. You know why it's simple to connect with God in prayer? Because He hardwired you and I. He formed it into the very fabric of your being to connect with Him. See, prayer is a connection with God and we are called to live a simple life and connect with God in a simple way. But here's what you need to realize. Religious tradition makes things complicated. It makes it complex and it actually trains us and it programs us. And we think that in order to come to God, we need to check these ten boxes and have these five things in order. And we need to make sure that we stand at the right time and sit at the right time. And we can end up giving lip service to God, but really our lifestyle is far from Him. So I believe I carry a call to prayer for us this evening and I believe that there's intercession and there's travail and there's a birthing that's going to take place tonight and I want to encourage you that we are called this evening to contend in prayer for what the Lord wants to do this weekend I'm telling you by the Spirit of the Lord He is going to fill this place up with hungry, thirsty, lost, broken, addicted people and I don't know where they're going to come from because I don't even really know where I am right now I know I'm in a big white tent in the middle of a green grassy field and I know that my name is Paul and I love my sons and my wife Taylor wasn't that worship so amazing tonight it was incredible 
We're so grateful to be here. We are here because of a yes to Jesus. We are here because we have seen by the Spirit already the presence and power of God poured out. And I am excited. But you know what? That is costly. And it's going to require us to participate with God and to enter in and to really begin to ask and seek and knock. Jesus taught us in the place of prayer that there's asking, there's seeking, and there's knocking. And He promised that if you ask, there is a response, there is an answer. If you seek, you will find. And if you knock, the door will be open to you. So we have the expectation of of God's answer to us. So I want to equip you and I want to encourage you to ask and to seek and to knock for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit here in this tent this week and this weekend that would really begin to shake and rattle the things that are buried. I kept having a vision during worship, I believe by the Holy Spirit, and I was seeing many buried things in this land. I was seeing many things Things that were once happening, that were once going that were once taking place that had died and were buried and I sense the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus that He's coming to Ireland and Northern Ireland and He is coming to Newcastle and He is going to raise and He is going to resurrect the things that are dead. He is going to raise to life, to new life, the things that the enemy wanted to put to death inside of the souls of His sons and daughters. Are you with me? tonight there's no resurrection life without crucifixion death the reason why we do not pray though it is so simple is because it is a death prayer is a death to self prayer is where we come into the presence of God Where we come in and we're not allowed to pretend. Why? Because God already knows the truth. See, the spirit of the age would make you avoidant. The spirit of fear would make you avoid the place of prayer. But the place of prayer is our greatest inheritance. The place of prayer, the place of connection with God. Can I tell you that the reason why Jesus Christ died, why He was crucified, why He shed His blood on the cross was to give you and I direct access to the throne of God. Before Jesus came and they were under the old covenant, they had to do all kinds of things. There were laws, there were statutes, there were ordinances, there were all kinds of requirements from God that they had to do in order to make contact with God. And here we are under the new covenant, post the shed blood of Jesus, and we can enter into the presence and the power of God right now. Through the place of prayer. Why? Because you were made to pray. You were made to commune with God. You were made to have fellowship and relationship with Jesus. You were made to know Him in a real and powerful way. I said of Caroline that she was going to be used to provoke many people. Why? Because she's boasting in the Lord and she is broadcasting a connection with God that will make many people that have been in church services their whole lives, they're going to say, what in the world is this lady doing? She's up here saying, I've only been saved 10 months, but you know what I can tell you? She's taken those 10 months real seriously. See, the amazing thing about new converts is they don't know how to make it complicated. Religion oftentimes hasn't gotten their hands on them yet and convinced them you got to do this and that. And that was why God wanted to go after the thing that was saying, well, I'm not qualified. No, you're probably more qualified to preach than me. Do you feel the presence of God tonight? I feel a stirring. I've come to activate you. I've come to provoke you to action and to call you to pray corporately with me tonight and to contend. Now I want you to know something. If your image of prayer looks something like this.
You need an upgrade. The reason why we don't pray is because we think it's just going to sit and just say a few words and hopefully we don't fall asleep. There's more to prayer than just devotional prayer. This is what you need to understand or tonight's going to be real awkward. And I'm okay with awkward. I actually thrive when things are awkward. It doesn't bother me a bit. There's more to prayer than just I, I'm going to have a conversation with God. I want to take you into the place of contending prayer. Of asking and seeking and knocking. See, Jesus told this story of somebody that basically wouldn't go away in the middle of the night because there was someone that had come and they needed to have food for their guests. And it says they kept knocking, 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 knocking. And they're like calling from the inside like, go away, man. I've already put my kids to bed. Don't you know how late it is? And they're like, no, 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 no. Hey, I'm here and I've got guests and I need your help. And God is teaching us and he's teaching the body of Christ all over how not to just pray but how to press in in prayer the book of Hosea says now is the time to press on to know the Lord this is the hour to press on to know the Lord there are some things that are freely given to us and then there are some things that you're going to have to fight for you're going to have to war for you're going to have to press in isn't it amazing that God in the old covenant that he gave Israel the promised land but the promised land was full of giants See, I think our idea of a promised land is just we're just going to walk in and it's going to be easy and we're going to prop our feet up and we're going to yawn and we're just going to have a good time. And God has filled the promised land, the land of our inheritance with giants so that we would learn how to depend on the Lord for the victory. So that we would learn that God is a mighty warrior and that He will fight on our behalf if we will press in, if we will enter in, and if we will not quit in the hour of prayer. Are you encouraged tonight? I want you to feel that stirring from the Spirit of God. It doesn't just come because someone says nice words in a row for a few minutes. It comes because the Spirit of God begins to rest and begins to stir. And if you're here tonight and you're a believer in Jesus Christ, I have news for you. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you and the Holy Spirit is your prayer coordinator and the Holy Spirit wants to teach you how to pray. He wants to teach you how to intercede. The Holy Spirit wants to deliver you from boredom in the place of prayer. Because the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to us. And there's nothing more, no one more magnificent than the Lord Jesus. And once you see Him, you cannot see life the same way anymore. Once you behold the beauty, the majesty, the splendor, the honor, the glory of the Son of Man, you get more excited about seeing Him in the life to come than anything that happens on this earth. When we see Jesus, we no longer love our lives even to the point of death. We begin to store up treasures for ourselves in heaven that can't be stolen from us. Did you know that every time you give your money as unto the Lord, if you do it generously and you do it with a willing and a cheerful heart, that you actually send your blessing on ahead of you? And then when you die, you're going to go and you're going to meet the blessings that you sowed in the earth. It's amazing. I can't wait to see the blessing. You know that heaven's not going to be the same for all of us, right? I'm sorry. But this is what the Word of God teaches. Sure, we're all going to be there if you've named the name of Jesus. But then there's the judgment for the reward for what you've done and what you've said. And for those that contend in prayer and for those that are willing to enter in and press in, you know why the prayer meeting is not well attended? Because prayer is the place where we have to face ourselves. I'm telling you, it is really, really, really difficult to pray with sin in your life. Because you go before the Lord and it's like standing between you and God. So what do we do? We avoid prayer. Because we're avoiding Him, because we're avoiding our sin, because we're avoiding the Holy Spirit convicting us. 
But prayer is an invitation because prayer is an opportunity for us to repent and for us to get right with the Lord and for us to receive God's mercy and receive His grace and to actually have clean hands and a pure heart to have a new start. Some of you need a new start tonight. I know it by the Spirit of God. Some of you need a new start. You need a clean slate. You need a sense of, I don't know what was really going on in my life before this week, but now I'm really going to serve the Lord and press in like I've always wanted to. That was a powerful statement that was made in the testimony. I hope you were listening. She said, I wasn't the person I wanted to be. Well, what kind of person did she want to be? She's talking about God beckoning her and saying, there's more for you. Everybody on the planet lives with a deep sense of there's got to be more. There must be more. Is this really all there is? And the answer is no. This life is not all there is. We're living for a life in an age that is to come, but only the Spirit of God can put that presence and that fire and that knowing in you. And He's really not going to do it in some big moment in public. He's going to do it in the place of prayer in the privacy of your home. He's going to kindle afresh the gift of God that's laying dormant in many of you tonight. I see you guys taking off grave clothes, all of us together. And we're going to come out of the Lazarus grave. We're going to come out of the stink and the filth. And we're going to come into pressing into the presence and the face of God. And doing what only He can do. This is to be as the tent of meeting this week. Where God would move mightily, where the Lord would sit down and be among us. And when the pillar of cloud would move and fire at night, they would move with Him. So I'm committed, if you are, to moving with God this week. And to allowing the Lord's presence to dictate what gets said, what gets preached. Guys, I've flown places and I've been all over and God is doing some amazing things in my life. But I'm not here because I have a need to preach. I'm here because I have a desire to see Jesus be glorified. To see souls be saved. To see bodies be healed. To see the miraculous. To see things that you and I can't do. But only God can but the word of God says we can have not because we ask not. I want to invite you to a big ask tonight. Ask God something huge, something wonderful, something powerful. Ask the Lord for something beyond yourself. And don't just merely ask Him something for your own sake, but ask Him for the sake of others. Ask Him for the sake of the lost. Ask Him for the sake of this region. Ask Him for the sake of the churches that are on this island. Ask Him for the sake of the burden of your own family and friends. Because we are running out of time. But when you don't pray, sleepiness gets on you. And when you neglect the place of prayer, apathy is there waiting to give you a big long hug. And when we are slothful in the place of prayer, passion for Jesus begins to wane. You know how I know I've been there? I confess to you tonight that I've been in ministry for nearly 10 years. And I've not always had an on fire prayer life. I've not always had this deep, wonderful... I see, I think people look at me and they think I like walk under this cloud of revelation and it's just sprinkles of God's presence all the time. And that's not the case. I'm a human being. And somehow, some way, God privileged me to share with you tonight and for the rest of this week. But I want to encourage you that there are times when we need to rebuild the walls and we need to restore what is broken in and broken down. And that's why I'm encouraging you tonight that if you are not full of the zeal and the passion of Jesus, if your heart is not fully seeing the light of the glory of the gospel, tonight's your night. Tonight's the night for all of us to gather up together and to really see and press in and intercede. But again, it's not just for us. It's for those that are coming. It's for what God wants to do this week and this weekend. Would you turn with me to Matthew 26? You thought I forgot, I didn't. I had plans to minister something else and that's not happening, so praise the Lord. Matthew 
Matthew chapter 26, the first book of the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew. And I want to begin reading in verse 36 of Matthew 26. So just so you know, Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's about to be crucified. He's already been betrayed by Judas at this point. He's lived his life in his three or three and a half years on earth. He's had his ministry. He's gathered his disciples. He's done these wonderful works and miracles and demonstrations of power. And God has moved through him. And here he is at his point of death where everything he's at this divine intersection in his life, in his ministry, where he's going to go to the cross and Jesus. Jesus models for us prayer. Perhaps you're not feeling it tonight. Maybe you're in a Gethsemane season. Maybe you're in a a period of time in your life where there's a pressing, where there's a crushing, where, where things aren't as good as you'd like them to be, or you're struggling, or you're hurting, or maybe you have an addiction in your life that nobody knows about. This is the hour, this is the time to pray. And to connect with God. Are you with me tonight? Matthew 26. We'll begin reading in verse 36. And it says. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And said to his disciples. Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them. My soul is deeply Grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. When Luke writes his account in his gospel. It says that Jesus was sweating like drops of blood. Were coming out of him. He was so distressed. So grieved. My soul is grieved to the point of death. Remain here. Keep watch with me. Verse 39. And he went a little beyond them. And fell on his face. And prayed saying my father If it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. Would you say sleeping? And said to Peter, so you men could not keep watch with me for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again a second time and prayed, saying, My Father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping. Would you say sleeping? Sleeping. Let's try again. Would you say sleeping? sleeping? For their eyes were heavy, for they had jet lag. No, that's that's not in there. That's me. Figured out our kids don't have jet lag. They just have jet. They're just excited all the time. I've got the lag. Their eyes were heavy. Verse 44. And he left them again and went away and prayed a third time. Saying the same thing once more. Then he came to the disciples and said to them. Are you still sleeping? Would you say sleeping? Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. You know, we sang a verse earlier tonight that said, we're breaking off the heaviness with praise. Do you remember that? We're breaking off the heaviness with praise. We fight heaviness with praise. We fight sleepiness with prayer. And we have two weapons this week. And you need to know this. We have two weapons. Everybody hold up a two at me. Praise the Lord. This way. Thank you, Jesus. I was slightly educated before I got... On a microphone in a foreign country. So two. We have two weapons. Second Corinthians 6 verse 7. Paul says that he has weapons. Of righteousness. For the right hand. And the left. I believe that God has given me insight. That our weapons this week. Are praise and prayer. 
We break off heaviness with praise. We break off sleepiness with prayer. If we could overthrow heaviness and sleepiness, this tent would turn into a circus for the Lord Jesus Christ. People would be so drawn. God would begin to suck in the wind and begin to bring people and blow people from all over. If there were a group of hungry souls that were throwing off sleep and heaviness through praise and through prayer I'm telling you the Holy Ghost would break out beyond measure but we're going to have to plow in the place of prayer tonight are you with me before we pray and I want to ask that you would come up and we could pray up here in these altars not because there's anything special about the turf that's up here but because it's an act of obedience and it's an act of togetherness it's an act of unity that we're not so spread out but we're actually down and together and we're coming in close to pray and to intercede but before we get there I want to give you three quick pictures of prayer if you're taking notes you can write these down I'm just going to tell you pictures of prayer or what prayer is like and what specifically comes into my mind when I think about prayer how we doing we good am I okay on time it's only uh, four o'clock in the United States I heard this thing starts at half seven Number one, the first picture of prayer is that prayer is like a mirror. Prayer is like a mirror. Somebody tell me what you do in the mirror. That's not a trick question. What did you say? You see your reflection. Anybody else? What do you do in the mirror? You look. You gaze. Your eyes are open. It would be really weird if you went to look in the mirror and closed your eyes. What's the point? So when we come into the place of prayer, it's like a mirror. We should have our eyes open. We should have the eyes of our heart, our spiritual eyes open. Why? Because God wants us to see in the place of prayer. Prayer is like a mirror because it's the place in which we see ourselves. This is why we avoid prayer because sometimes we don't always like what we see. But we serve a God that gives beauty for ashes. We serve a God that will give you a willing spirit if you're heavy. We serve a God that will anoint you with joy overflowing even if you're in the midst of difficulty. We serve a God that's promised to comfort us even when we mourn. So in prayer there's an exchange, but prayer is like a mirror because prayer prayer is the place of reflection and repentance. I believe that there's repentance in prayer that needs to take place tonight. If you are apathetic, if you are slothful, if you are under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, that your spiritual life and your fervor, your passion for Jesus is not where you want it to be, is not where you know God wants it to be, I believe there's an invitation tonight to repent. And this is good news. We've got to recover repentance and stop it from being a negative thing in our minds when repentance by the word of God is a gift to us repentance is God saying hey I know that things aren't where they want to be or where they need to be but you know what I'm inviting you to start anew and afresh my grace is sufficient for you my mercies are new every morning we have an opportunity tonight to come into the place of prayer and to look in the mirror I want to encourage you to take inventory of your own soul make sure that you come in tonight asking questions of God Father, what do you want to show me? What do you want to reveal to me? What are you speaking to me? What are some things in my life that need to change? What are some friendships or some relationships that don't need to be anymore? How are we doing? we okay? That's number one. Number two. The second picture of prayer is that prayer is like a womb. Number one is that prayer was like a mirror. Number two is that prayer is like a womb. Prayer is the womb in which spiritual things are birthed and formed inside of us. God gave women a womb. 
He placed the womb inside of the woman. And He placed the womb inside of the woman that things might be formed and that things might be birthed in and through that womb. And prayer is like a womb because God has given you and I that spiritual womb, that place of prayer where things can be formed and things can be developed so that they can be given birth to. Actually, when the Word of God talks about prayer, it mentions groanings that are too deep for words. It says that the Spirit of God is living in us in Romans 8. And sometimes there's an intercession and there's a groaning and there's a travail and there's a weeping where it's like, man, I just have this overwhelming sense of God's presence and I don't really know what to pray, but the Holy Spirit is going to give me the words. Or I don't even know how to pray, but the Spirit Himself meets us in that moment and and sometimes He even gives us a language with which to speak to God. We call it being baptized in the Holy Spirit where it says you're filled with the Spirit and there's an utterance of tongues that's not in a language of your own. You're speaking mysteries to God but you're connecting with Him and that won't make any sense to your natural man. Which is really the whole point. Yes, God wants you to babble in an unknown tongue that doesn't make sense to you. Why? So that when He moves, you give Him glory because you don't even know what you said. You don't preach sermons in tongues. But you pray in the Holy Spirit. And begin to intercede because it's like a womb and things are being formed. Why? Because the womb is the place of possibility. The womb is the place of potential. But I want to warn you tonight against trying to give birth to things that are not yet fully formed in you. God begins to speak. God plants a seed. and God begins to water that seed and we get excited. And you know what can happen if you speak about things too soon before God is done? You can abort the process of God in your life. Some of us have felt the pain of God moves powerfully or God speaks to us and we go to share it with somebody else who's not spiritually equipped to even understand what we're saying and there's a misunderstanding and it brings discouragement on us. Why? Because we're trying to give birth to something that's not fully formed in us yet. Prayer is like a womb. It's the place of potential. It's the place of possibility. I don't know if you've ever been pregnant tonight or whether you've been hopefully married to someone who was pregnant, but there's that overwhelming sense of joy when you find out there's life in the womb. And by the way, life in the womb is precious to God. Don't you dare believe the spirit of the age that would tell you it's not alive and it doesn't matter. No, life in the womb is precious to the Lord. And God hates the shedding of innocent blood. That's not a political statement. That's a spiritual truth that we need to grab hold of as believers in Jesus. That we will defend and stand for life in the womb regardless of who opposes us. Why? Because I would rather stand alone with God than perish with the crowd and you have that wonderful sense of life is in the womb but then there's the potential there's the possibility is it a boy or a girl isn't it amazing that in this age of confusion where people think there's more than male and female when God has said there's male and female that all they're asking is it is it a boy or is it a girl because God makes no mistakes. Is it a boy? Is it a girl? There's that wonderful sense of we're about to find out. And now because of technology you can find out around I think 20 weeks. We have friends that they wait until the baby's born. I can't imagine the anxiety. <laughs> Birth is already crazy as it is. This is wild. A human's about to appear that we haven't seen before. I don't really want to add is it a boy or is it a girl? We like to plan. If you do that, praise the Lord. It's just a joke. Number three, the third and final picture of prayer. And with this, I would want to ask the worship team to come up. And I'll invite us forward to pray and intercede together. Does anybody feel stirred in your spirit, man, tonight? Does anybody have a sense of expectation for what the Lord is going to do? I'm telling you, He's looking for a group of people 
that are united with one heart and one faith, with one hunger to see God move, to see Jesus be glorified. I'm so grateful that this isn't a Catholic or a Protestant meeting. It's a Jesus tent. It's the place of encounter with Him. Jesus isn't contemporary or traditional. He's the Son of God. Number three, prayer is like a threshing floor. Does anybody know what a threshing floor is? Biblically, it's where they would begin to tread the grain. It's where there would be a place of separation. You would take the grain into the threshing floor and maybe you would use an ox. And there would be a separation. There would be a place of labor. Prayer is like a threshing floor in which we hear the voice of the Lord and there's a separation that happens in the place of prayer. Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And that it's piercing and it brings division between soul and spirit, joint and marrow. Prayer is that place where the word of God comes. Where when we're meditating on the word or the voice of the Holy Spirit begins to speak. And there's a cutting and there's a separation. And it is that threshing floor where things become clear to us. If you struggle to know, was that God or was that my voice internally? You need to be in the place of prayer. Exercising those muscles so that you can begin to separate between soul and spirit. So that you can get in that threshing floor I'm telling you corporate prayer and contending prayer is oftentimes messy I don't know if you've ever seen a threshing floor but it's not neat it's not clean it's not tidy there's a pressing there's a crushing there's a laboring there's a plowing and there is a contending would you stand to your feet with me tonight If you feel stirred in your spirit tonight to pray, I want to ask you to come forward tonight and just fill these altars. If you have a heart to see God move this week in power, if that's why you're here, let's just come all the way forward. You step all the way up. We're going to gather. You can stand. You can kneel. You can lay down. They told me there's freedom tonight. I want to encourage you to get out from behind your seat. Why do we have to come forward? Because it's a sign of just repentance, obedience, renewed faith to God. It's a sign of people contending. If you need to go tonight, please feel released. But I want to encourage you to come and join us in these altars and begin to seek the Lord together. feel uncomfortable but that's exactly where God wants us tonight because when we are uncomfortable he can comfort us all across the room tonight would you begin to lift your voice in prayer just begin to pray just break through that thing in you that doesn't want to pray loud that resistance of volume God wants us to get loud tonight to press in, to enter in, to begin to thresh, to begin to labor for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, for demonstrations of power with signs and wonders and miracles that God would restore the greatness and the glory of His Son in Northern Ireland. If you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit yet with the evidence of speaking in tongues and prophecy and courage, I want to encourage you to come forward tonight and pray and ask the Lord, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Baptize me in fire. Fill me afresh with this passion and this love that I read about, that I see, that I hear.
want to be used of the Lord to push us out of our comfort zones tonight. I want to ask if you're willing that you would just take a step somewhere. That you would move somewhere. That if you're sitting over here, that you would walk over here. That you would begin to shift and begin to move. That we would fill these altars and fill this front space. Because when God is moving, we are moving. We don't want to stand still and be like statues when the presence of God and the Word of God is going forth because He's after a responsive people. He's after an obedient people. He's after a people that aren't pretending. They're contending. So God, tonight we ask for more of You. We're asking for Your presence, for Your power, for Your fire. We're asking that every promise that You you've made would be fulfilled that every word that you've spoken would not return to you void but that it would accomplish everything for which you sent it God why would you have meetings five nights in a row in the middle of August in Newcastle Northern Ireland unless you were going to pour out your spirit unless you were going to save and heal and restore and deliver and redeem and glorify your name. Father, would you break down every wall of apathy, complacency, indifference. Would you cause the statues to move? In Jesus' name, let there be a mighty move of God that would be unprecedented. That could not be compared to anything that's ever happened. Start a wildfire in this nation. Start a wildfire in this city. Let the glory of Jesus fill the earth. Let the glory of Jesus fill this tent. Let the presence of God break into homes and neighborhoods and cities right now. God, we pray for the sleepers tonight. We pray for those that are sleeping. We pray firstly for ourselves and those that are slumbering in the hour of awakening. God, Your Word says, Awake, O sleeper, rise from the dead, for the light of Christ will shine on you. God, we ask that You would awaken the sleepers. We ask that You would wake up Your church that you would sound an alarm 
that you would call a fast and a sacred assembly. Let the elders weep between the porch and altar. Let there be an awakening and a stirring in the hearts of your people. Let the lost who are sleeping wake up to see the light of the glory of the Gospel. Oh God, would you release awakening in Northern Ireland? We take authority in the name of Jesus over depression, over suicide, over addiction, over hopelessness, over despair. We speak the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name those above, those on, and those under the earth. The name of Jesus is above depression, is above anxiety, is above every addiction. We bind suicide and suicidal thoughts right now. And we release life in the Holy Spirit. You're going to live and not die, says the Lord. You're going to proclaim the works, the wonders, and the words of Jesus. Stir us up to spiritual hunger, Lord. Forgive us for not caring about the things You care about. For not loving what You love and not hating what You hate. Forgive us, Father, for being an enemy of the cross. Forgive us for quenching Your Holy Spirit. Would You stir a hunger for You and for Your presence? God, may our love for You be greater than anything You can do for us. God, we just want You. We need You. Yes, Lord. We pray like Elijah, send down Your fire. We put our bodies up on the altar as a living sacrifice. Come and consume us, Lord. I just sense that some of us need to yell for our own good. You might need to shout at yourself to wake up and to follow Jesus like you used to. Why did you give your life to the Lord? Why are you here tonight?
Lord, we declare breakthrough in the name of Jesus. We declare that you're going to give us the victory this week and that the ground is already breaking up. I thank you, Lord, for the rain of your Spirit that's coming to soften the ground, that's coming to soften hard hearts, that's coming to soften callous minds. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Just all across the room with me. Just engage God. Just re-engage with the Lord. Just set your eyes on Him. Close your eyes if you need to. Don't be distracted right now. Let's really push and let's press in together. Let's not come up short of what the Lord wants to accomplish tonight. He's seeking hungry hearts. It says the eye of the Lord searches the earth to and fro, looking for those who fear His name. God, make us desperate tonight. We want to feel that desperation again. We want to feel that passion. Would You awaken us and restore our first love? You know, the thing that you feel, the resistance that you feel when you go to pray, the distraction that happens when you go to press into the Lord is spiritual in nature. And it's resistance and opposition in the Spirit. But God is raising up a mature people and an equipped people here this week that are going to recognize the distraction and throw it off, that are going to push through the opposition, that are going to press in when you feel tired, and really learn how to plow. So I want to ask again, if you're willing tonight, if you need to move and take a step forward, get out of the aisle, and just begin to move in this tent. If you need to walk, if you need to pace, Just begin to change your physical location and just say, God, I want to be hungry for You. I want You to restore that passion and that zeal or give it to me for the very first time. I want to feel Your overwhelming presence. And I yield my body and I give You my whole life. I'm not going to hold anything back from You. I say yes to You and to whatever You have for me. Jesus, I just want You.
We're pushing back against sleepiness, against tiredness, against weariness. We choose not to grow weary in doing good. For if you endure, you will receive a reward. Some of you feel weary tonight. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare back off of what God told you to do. I thank you, Lord. We're contending. We're pressing in. We're breaking down walls and we're getting into our spirit, man. We're moving beyond what is intellectual and we're getting into what is spiritual. For no eye has seen, no ear has heard, but the Spirit Himself has revealed it. Holy Spirit, would You reveal what no eye has seen and no ear has heard, but what You've prepared for us. Open the eyes of our heart. Open the eyes of our hearts that we would not sleep the sleep of death. This last thing we're going to do together. These are just activations. They're just how we participate with God. When He's moving, we're moving. So I just want to ask all across the room, would you stand with me to your feet tonight? And if you're willing, only if you're willing, there's no need to manipulate anybody. If you're too uncomfortable to participate, that's really okay. I believe God will help you get there by the end of this week if you stick around. But I want to ask if you're willing tonight, would you just grab the hand of the person next to you or you can lock arms because this is about unity and when you're unified, you touch.
you, Lord. Just begin to pray that God would unite a divided nation. That God would unite a divided church. That God would unite divided families and divided marriages, divided households. Lord, we pray for unity right now in Jesus' name. We pray for oneness over Newcastle, over Northern Ireland, over the United Kingdom, Lord. Let there be unity in the Spirit. Let works of division, every demonic agenda to divide and conquer, we come against you now in the name of Jesus. And we pray in the name of Jesus that there would be unity and peace where there has been war, there will be peace. Where there has been trouble, there will be peace in the name of Jesus. Jesus prayed that we would be one. Just as He and the Father are one. God, make us one. Make us one in unity this week. That we would be of one heart and one mind. That we would have one goal. The glory and the preeminence of Jesus. The fame of the name of Jesus growing exponentially in our hearts and in this region. God, we're praying that people that don't even know about new life would end up in this tent before the week is over. We're praying that people that don't even know about Jesus would come and would hear. Lord, we choose now to invite them, to call them, to text them, to talk to them about You tomorrow and Friday and Saturday and Sunday that You would stir a unified move I feel specifically led to pray for marriages real fast. Because I sense that there's division between husband and wife. You are not on the same page and though you make jokes, it's actually really painful. God, we ask for unity in marriages right now. God, I pray that you would wake up apathetic husbands that you would wake up men that are not walking in their God-given authority and leading their home and leading their family and leading their children. God, we're asking for unity in marriages right now. We're asking for an abundance of love between husband and wife. We're asking, Lord, that you would heal and restore the family unit in this region. That fathers would raise their kids. That mothers would train their children and that mom and dad would not just like each other but love each other for a lifetime and honor the covenant and the commitment that they made before you Lord let marriage be held in honor tonight among all because marriage is a reflection of you and the church let there be no division in your body. Let there be unity and clarity and peace. Now just engage the Lord with me and just begin to ask the Lord, God, what 
do you want to say to the person next to me? Because God speaks today. And there's a spirit of prophecy that's here tonight. A a spirit of encouragement. A word of encouragement. A word of life. Because what we've got to break out of is, well, I'm here to receive something. And no, we've come to pour out. We've come to give. So just ask the Lord, God, how can I pray for the person next to me? What do you want to say to them? Would you put a word, a picture, a a verse of Scripture on my heart? How can I be used of you? And just take a few moments here and just begin to pray. And pray for the person next to you. Pray your best prayer. Pray how you would want to be prayed for. You can do it in twos or threes or fives. It doesn't matter. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. But let's pray and let's encourage one another. We're getting our voice back. We're learning that we have something to offer and something to give. That our words to God matter. You all have a lanyard in the Spirit. You can pray for someone. If you're a believer in Jesus. Yes, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord. Father, we thank you for what you've done tonight. Lord, we're asking that the peace of Jesus would fill every heart and every mind. That your peace would be our portion. That your love would be ours in its fullness tonight. God, we ask that you would leave no stone unturned this week. That you would stir up, that you would tear up hard ground. And that you would release your peace tonight. Lord, we thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. That you're gathering a hungry and a thirsty people. We bless your name and we thank you for this evening. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
Listen, you have the freedom to linger, to pray, to continue to follow the Holy Spirit. We're just going to allow the presence of the Lord to linger, so continue to be used and led of Him. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for coming tonight. I look forward to what the Lord is going to do tomorrow night. Is anybody excited for round two tomorrow night? I'm thrilled. God's just getting started. Amen.